pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call shows everyone present tonight. Need a, uh, approval of the agenda. Do we have any additions, Judy? No? No? Good. So moved. I'll second. Uh, Most? But I would like some additions. Sir. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay. One was it was supposed to be uh, an update on the Brian Brown residence on Lake Road. Okay. And uh, the other one, I just thought for information purposes to give a, rec I don't see a spot on here for Recorey Trail update. They are pulling tracks and everything, so just an update on that for everybody to know. So, so do you have a an update on Brian Brown or? Yeah. You, you want it? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I don't know, out in uh, department or other action, mayor, council reports? Or sure. Yeah. Okay. A motion been made and second to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same motion passes. Open forum. Anybody wish to speak? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Vince Schaefer, 541 Caroline Lane. I have a few comments on the proposed 2017 levy that I'd like to share with you this evening. From what I've seen so far on the streets is Santa Claus, or here better known as the taxpayers, are not too happy with the city council's wish list for this year, especially with the burden of the Pleasant Lake water system that is not self-sustaining and may not be for many years to come. And we are, are already burdened with the existing bond of the city hall and fire hall, plus the water and sewer bonds we're paying on and the proposed road and bridge bond. This bonding discussion started as a $3.5 million road and bridge bond and suddenly morphed into a $4.6 million bond with the additions of three items on the wish list, namely a salt shed, public works building, and plow truck. I'm not knocking the road and bridge bond as I think that is long overdue. But adding the wish list puts a, uh, puts a huge financial burden on the people in the city. This reminds me of the pre-consolidation days when three entities had come to a consensus on a $1.2 million city hall and fire hall joint government or a city hall joint government center and the fire hall and after the consolidation it grew to over three million dollars and i'm not blaming anybody up there for this but this is just an example of how this type of thing can grow legs in government and get beyond control thank you anybody else Cody Hermanitz, 211 First Street West. I was going to email all of you, but my whatever you call it was down and it wouldn't work. So I'm just letting you know. I think too we got to let's let's go easy and slow on what we're spending in the taxpayers' dollars. The proposed budget sounded high enough. Let's not go any wish lists. Thank you. Okay, next item, approval of the City Council Minutes of September 21st. Make a, mo a motion to approve. I'll second. 
Motion made and second. Mr. Well, Mayor, go ahead, Dwayne. Motion was for what, uh, Sue? To approve the minutes. Oh, the minutes? September 21st. Oh, okay. Last month's and, meeting. Okay, no, that's not a problem. Okay, okay. all in favor say aye. 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 All same, motion passes. Next item approval of bills paid. Tab 7 under here. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the, our approval of the bills as presented, and when we get a second on that, I'd like to have a discussion on carving out one particular one for discussion. Okay. I will second the motion. Motion been made and second. Thank Go you. ahead with discussion. Yeah, and the, and the quick one is, and I called staff on it today, and uh, she gave me the specifics, but I'm still not well versed on it, and I... Do not see our public works director. He could have, and it was the uh, the uh, um, Wisma. No, it's the. I'll well get my chain protection. of thought here. It's uh, wellhead protection. Wellhead protection. Thank you, yes, counselor. Um, and it was eight hundred. Some and help me out here, gang. Eight fifty-five. It's on page four. Four. Okay. I apologize. I just got in from another meeting, but we'll get it here. And so. Um, that wellhead protection, just for purposes of uh, information, uh, DWISMA, which is uh, Drinking Water S System Management Authority, I think that's what the acronym stands for, and we annually have, I believe, a thousand, maybe twelve hundred dollars in our budget. So it comes up to every ten years, we have a obligation by the Department of Health to do that. I served on there as a council representative. The last time I was upgraded, which was probably five years ago, maybe six years ago. But it looks like an $855 bill to the city of Rockville from the Stearns County Soil Water Conservation District, so it would be under the county, developing CRP plans. And so it's news to me, because typically what will happen is we ramp up approximately a year before, unless it's something to do with the maintenance that they need to do, uh, you know, that they have a, intermittently halfway through that they have to do some thing, but it would seem logical that it would be a cost to the county not rather than a cost to the city. So maybe unless Judy can give us some insights other than that, if we could just stall that decision about is that a legitimate payment or should that be something bore by the county? I'm guessing we paid the county for this. Already? It's already paid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's paid. This must be something we, the county had to provide as part of this. And so or we it would... Per, or is it a permit we have to get from the county to... Developing CRP plans. So it's, it's underneath the comment section. Yeah. And maybe if Marty was here and he's not and he has a legitimate... Uh, vacation planned and we knew he was not going to be here and I was not aware of this and uh, I, I, maybe what we'll just do is ask for a clarification yeah, from Marty yeah. and yeah. see if it's something that uh, after the fact we can always change it if it's wrong or something. Sure. Sounds okay. good. I, I did have that highlighted too because I was wondering if that was the CRP plan, um, if that's referring to the plan that we have to have for the Conservation water. Conservation. conservation. Right. Oh. I, I was questioning why we would pay the county to develop that plan when the DNR will help for free. Yeah. I went to that meeting. Nobody from <clears throat> the city staff had went, but I went to that DNR meeting, and the DNR is more than welcome to come in and work with the city for free to yep. develop that plan. So I would be okay. curious to hear if we paid for something we could have yeah. got for free. Yeah. And, it, and it's under, excuse me, uh, Mr. Mayor, wellhead protection. So if that was the case, then it would be put under a different uh, uh, department or a different one, such as Water Enterprise Fund. Is it? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, motion's okay. been made and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. the same. Motion passes. Uh, consent agenda. Two items approved, September, October 2016 journal entries and acknowledged Lions Monument Committee's September 7th, 21st, and October 12th meeting minutes. And that was circulated to all of us. Yep. I would make a motion to approve the cons consent agenda. I'll second that motion. motion One comment. Go ahead, Rick. Um, I would just like to note, note to staff that the legal fee city under on page one of the journal entries, 
page one, uh, let's see, it is, it's the second item. Transaction date 922, Legal Fee City. There's a journal entry at $8,250. I would just like to get some clarification as to what that was for. A breakdown of that? Or a... Well, just the, the journal entry here shows $8,250 credited and $8,250 debited. And I would just want to find out what that's for. That it says comments recoded. Is that just entered under the wrong account, maybe, Judy? Is that coded wrong or something? It goes from legal fee to other professional services. Yeah. That's like, yep, that goes to other. Um, I think 42800 off the top of my head is that um, for the sheriff. So at one time, um, that Stearns County Auditor, or the Janelle Kendall, they charge us, I think it's um, oh. twice a year. So that $8,250, so we were, it, we normally charge it under legal, but being that we are separating the codes now from you know, your planning commission and all that, and we figured because that comes from the sheriff's end of it, that's why we moved that 8250 to the other professional. And if you look at the 42800, that is um, the sheriff's department code. We just were allocating it to a different. From one, that'd be the 4100 is general, and now we're allocating it to the sheriff, because that's who Janelle, the sheriff um, has violations or whatever. Janelle is the one that. And I think you're right. It's to process for our county. Uh, Clerk uh, Janelle to uh, process those claims that are relevant to the city of Rockville. And maybe it was council action. And it's the same amount of money. It just goes into a different. Right. I know it was just a journal entry, okay. uh, credit and a debit. But I just wanted clarification on it. Okay. Motion been made and second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same. Motion passes. Item nine, public hearing, liquor compliance failure. Adam, um, did uh, Marty ask you just to make some comments about the, uh, no, yeah. nothing new? You know? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, Marty asked me to make some brief statement on uh, what the ordinance requires. Okay. Uh, when there is a violation, uh, that first violation, there is a mandatory fine and there's a mandatory suspension um, the fine is five hundred dollars i believe uh, that can be imposed before uh, the council holds a hearing uh, the suspension does require a hearing um, that's the purpose of the public hearing tonight before that can be imposed um, there is a letter from the property owner it appears that he already uh, closed his business for the required one day prior to the hearing um, so this is merely an opportunity for the public or the license holder to address the council and make comments on the violation or uh, anything else relevant to the, okay. to the issue. So technically we're holding the public hearing on it right now? I just, okay. That is correct. Uh, do you think I should read the letter? Or is, is Brian Bell here? I don't see him. Should I read it, you think? Or? You're, you're free to, and it is, you know, at some point you'll, we'll need to open it up for public comments, if any. Okay, well, I'll, I'll read it. I dated October 19th to uh, Rockville City Council, Martin Bode, City Administrator, R.E. B's Liquor. Item one, prior to September 21st council meeting, Mr. Bode told me that the liquor violation would not be on the agenda for the September meeting. Item two, then it was, I received a letter dated September 21st, 2016, saying to pay the fine, $500 fine by October 22nd. I had to close for one day within 30 days of the date of the letter. Then on October 4th, the Cold Spring Record has a, quote, notice of public hearing city of Rockville, unquote, on the, quote, proposed violation and the proposed penalty, close quote, shouldn't a hearing be held prior to enacting the penalty, question mark. Item four, the council in the past stayed the fine for the first violation if there were no violations in the next three years. 
if a violation occurred in the next three years, then the penalties would be retroactive to the first. If the interpretation or the ordinance has changed, what were the dates of the publication of this change in the Cold Spring record? Next item to me, the Monday closing and a fine is a double penalty for a first violation. Note, due to the timeliness, we close on October 17th to comply with Mr. Bodie's letter. Last item, I'd also like to know why Rockville requires a one-day closing in addition to a monetary fine when the city of St. Cloud does not. Parentheticals, he's got October 11th, 2016, St. Cloud Times. Respectfully, Brian Bell, owner. And he sent a copy of uh, uh, St. Cloud Times article October 11th, where apparently they didn't have a one day closing in addition to a, looks like they might have had a $750 fine in St. Cloud. Anyway, it's public. Anybody wish to speak on the issue? <clears throat> Yes, and I'm still Vince Schaefer, 541 Caroline Lane. Uh, Brian shared some of this information with me and had asked me about it. And uh, I think this, uh, right now this is over and done with, so it's kind of a moot issue, but I hope that you people learned something from this. This was voted on and passed to fine him $500 and clothes for one day. And then, after the decision is made, you have a public hearing. That's kind of putting the cart before the horse, I think. And, and uh, <laughs> I'm not saying whose fault it was or whatever. I think everybody involved in it was at fault because this is something that should never ever happen in city government. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Go ahead, Rick. Could I ask Adam something? Sure. Um, from what, the way I read the law, the, what we have, the one-day closing and the $500 fine, is the minimum required by state law, right? That is correct. Um, actually, it is the minimum required by your ordinance. Um, the state law doesn't set those. Uh, they don't. You are, as the licensing authority, have the ability to be more restrictive. State law addresses, you know, the sale to a minor uh, is is a misdemeanor offense under state law. Um, what you're doing through the fine and the suspension is an extension of your authority as the licensing entity for liquor licenses. And so this is um, kind of the civil side of, of the violation. There's... State law provides for the, the criminal side of that. Um, your ordinance, you, the city of Rockville has adopted uh, Minnesota Basic Code, which is kind of that template of ordinances. A fair number of cities across the state have adopted those. Um, the licensee referenced the city of St. Cloud. They have their own ordinance uh, criteria. Um, they're free to impose whatever standards. And so really every city could have a different set of minimum fine amounts or suspension. Um, that's up to each individual city as the licensing entity. Okay, thank you. So just to clarify the issue of a cart before the horse, unless we changed, had a public hearing and changed our ordinance, this council could not have not Pose the one day and five hundred dollar fine. Correct. The fine does not require a hearing. Um, right. The council can impose that fine prior to a hearing. Uh, the suspension is supposed to have a hearing prior to the suspension. I'm not okay. sure uh, what letter was. I did not see the letter that was sent to the licensee. Okay. Um, but uh, there should be a, a hearing like you're holding tonight prior to a suspension. But the, I mean. The suspension under your ordinance is mandatory. Right. So what, what's the point of the hearing then? Um, I mean, if there, it doesn't sound like there's an opportunity to change it unless we change the ordinance. Well, um, what I've seen in other communities is, uh, you know, your one-day suspension is a minimum. Um, when you have chronic violators, um, the public can sometimes... Uh, 
get up in arms about that and express their opinion to the council. Um, and that might be an opportunity for the council to say, the minimum's not enough here. And so it does serve a purpose. Okay. It's, it's not pointless, um, but your ordinance does have a minimum suspension. So it's, it's not like you could, without some unique circumstance, forego that. Right. Yeah. Still a public hearing? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Come on. If my memory serves me right, I think you did suspend first violators already uh, from that $500 fine. Do you all remember doing that? Uh, you know, it's, it's, yes, it's you, I, you know, we don't remember it because we weren't affected by it, but the people who run those businesses when someone else was uh, charged with that same uh, violation and the was their first violation and they, the $500 fine was suspended like he said in the letter. I do believe that was true here. And so I can understand that he would wonder why some one of the other businesses got that bypassed, but he didn't. Yeah, well, if we, we didn't follow our ordinance once. I don't That's think it's an excuse to not follow it again. We probably weren't well, that, I don't think that was not following it. Can't they suspend that five hundred dollar fine if they want to? No, no, it's mandated by the, our the fine and the one day suspension are the mandatory minimum penalties upon a violation. Okay, but they can't and they cannot suspend that even though okay right. they did it yep. wrong. Okay. Now I know why you didn't do it. And I, I believe the council did have another entity that failed uh, inspection and. I believe there was another business in town that also yes. recently had a one-day suspension. Maybe in the last month or two. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I would just like to add something to what I said. Uh, I did see the letter that Brian received from the city administrator, and it stated they voted to fine him $500 and... He had to close for a day, and there was a date given, and I don't remember what that was, but the date was before this public hearing tonight. He was told he had to make that decision. So like uh, it was said, I think this public hearing was just, uh, um, I don't know why. I would like to, have uh, the attorney clarify this for me just I don't know if I heard it right but the state statutes does not mandate a $500 fine but the city ordinance does and that's because the city adopted the Minnesota basic code that's where the ordinance flows from. It's uh, found in the Minnesota Basic Code provisions that were adopted by the city as part of the liquor licensing. But again, the state does not mandate that. The state deals with the criminal consequences for sales to minors or whatever the violation right. might be. Okay. Thank you. That's exactly what I had told Brian. So. Anybody else? <clears throat> I'll well, I guess make a they'd... motion to close the public hearing. Yeah. I'll second that. Motion made and second. Close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same. Motion passes. Council wish to do any further action? or we? I, I would like to make one quick comment. And quite frankly, uh, one of the residents has stood it that just shared uh, in the previous years, some of us that were seating here did give the uh, the first offense. Uh, we waived that penalty. Uh, that it was stayed. 
or stayed, yeah. sorry, yeah, stayed. But quite frankly, the most previous one just several months ago we did, and so it, we d our hands are tied. Our ordinance through the basic code doesn't give us any flexibility whatsoever, irrelevant of the state giving us that right, but we have adopted the basic code, and so we have a breach of, of our fiduciary responsibilities if we did not abide by the code requirement. So the only way to do it is to change the, the uh, basic code, which is adopted. So. Yeah. No action, no additional action I would recommend. Okay. Next item, Department Report Sheriff. Pick. Good evening. Uh, I'll apologize if I didn't get you a copy of our activity sheet, so I'm not sure it got emailed out to you. Um, we did get them. You did? Okay. Yep. I was looking through my emails and I didn't see it. So. Um, all right, well, kind of a busy month, quite frankly. Uh, we ended up having a total of 41 hours of contract hours. Um, I'll just kind of go through the calls for service that we had, um, where it says all calls in Rockville, September 2016. Uh, we did have two 1050s. Those are just um, simple motor vehicle accidents. Again, uh, property damage. Uh, one where a couple of vehicles collided on Conner Road 139 and uh, Sock River Road. Nobody injured. The other one was a uh, car versus a deer accident. Uh, Conner Road 140 and Highway 23. Um, we did have an intoxicated person call, uh, somebody, a business called in for assistance, somebody went into the bathroom, passed out, locked themselves in the bathroom, uh, we just helped get them out of there and brought them to uh, a detox facility. Uh, one 1072 were dead body, uh, nothing unusual, just an elderly person that passed away in their home. Uh, we had a couple of alarms, uh, one of them was residential, false alarm, the other one I really couldn't pull up the data for some reason. I uh, did an alcohol compliance check that passed. Um, Moving a little down, a uh, deputy was driving through and saw uh, some dark smoke, went and spoke to the uh, homeowner and he was doing an illegal burn. So there was a citation issued for uh, bill uh, burning prohibited substances. And I go through down through the, below the contract hours, there's what's listed as a Danko violation. That's the domestic abuse, no contact order that's issued by a judge in court. Uh, there was actually an arrest made on that violation. Uh, a couple barking dog complaints that were handled. Uh, one of them was a dog running out and barking at a biker. He maced it or sprayed it and the dog went away and the homeowner came out and uh, just basically educated them on keeping their dog contained. The other one was a barking dog complaint that was resolved before we arrived. Uh, the homeowner came out and took responsibility for the dog, just the dog got away from him. Uh, domestic in progress, uh, that was actually another arrest for a domestic assault. Uh, the driving complaint there listed, we were unable to locate both of those. We did have two DWI arrests, uh, one at Highway 23 and County Road 6, the other one at County Road 47 and 88th Avenue. Um, that second one uh, resulted in a, a taser deployment to arrest the guy. He tried to run off on foot and was resisting arrest. Uh, two fraud complaints, they're both ongoing investigations. The first one... Um, is a credit card, theft of credit card information. I don't, not the credit card itself, but somebody fraudulently using somebody's credit card. There was no loss to the credit card holder because they were able to get the payment stopped, etc. But that's an ongoing investigation. They have uh, identified a suspect. Uh, the other one is like a check washing. Somebody issued a check. It got probably picked up in the mail. Somebody altered the check and tried to cash it. Again, ultimately the bank uh, did not hold the account holder responsible, so there was no monetary loss to the, to the account holder, which is pretty typical, which is good, but uh, still ongoing investigations. Uh, hit and run property damage accident with uh, no suspect information. Somebody came out, saw the car had been hit. Uh, a couple loud music complaints. Uh, they were either quieted down or completely done by the time we arrived on scene. Um, the narcotics is an open uh, violent offender task force narcotics investigation. Really not in any detail that I can provide you there. A couple noise complaints. Uh, one of them was a loud exhaust on a car, which no citation was issued, just a, a warning. The no pay customer was a gas drive off. The person came back and paid, so that was resolved. Uh, the pursuit on foot was a warrant arrest, so 
somebody saw somebody walking down the street and chased them down and made a warrant arrest. Uh, one school bus stop arm violation resulting in a citation. There's a handful of uh, suspicious activities. Um, they were either unfounded, uh, a, a motorist assist, a civil process being served. Uh, so they're all pretty relatively nothing except for one of them was a vehicle parked on the side of the road that had a subject with a warrant in it, so an arrest was made there. Um, a couple welfare checks uh, resulting in uh, mental health evaluations. There was one other, the knife assault that I skipped over. Uh, that was actually uh, another arrest for a domestic related assault where a knife was displayed <coughs> and threatened in the, in the commission of the crime. So um, we had three pretty significant, I'll call them significant, domestic related incidents arrests in the city. So when I say it was busy, that's kind of what I'm pointing to. Um, we had a whole bunch of traffic stops. I think it was uh, 57 stops total, resulting in, I didn't count the citations this time around, but a variety of different uh, violations ranging from speeding to expired registration, DWI, so on and so forth. That's all I had. Okay. Any questions? All right. Thanks, Vic. Thank you. Planning Commission, Bill. Mayor, Council Members, we have two items on the agenda tonight. Uh, first one, number one, consider approval of resolution 2016-38. Uh, this is a request to rezone a 0 0.6 acre parcel from a B2 to an R1. We held a public hearing on Tuesday, October 11th. Uh, we actually had a very good turnout at the public hearing. Uh, no one against the resolution, more or less people had questions. And they were pretty much, well, they were answered all that evening. Um, property contains about 0 0.6 acres. The 15 notices of public hearing were sent out. The property is currently B2. Uh, this property was actually split from the business parcel back in 2013 when it was the 400 Club. Uh, adjacent property to the north, the water's edge is zoned B2, and then adjacent property to the southwest is zoned R1. Uh, this parcel is located in the Shoreland District. Um, Planning Commission recommends approval. Question? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve to uh, accept the recommendation of the planning and zoning and uh, consider changing that uh, zoning to R1. I'll second that motion. Motion been made and second to approve the rezoning from B2 to R1. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Same. Motion passes. The second item is that we do, or as of the first of the year, we will have two open seats on the Planning Commission. So if we, do we advertise usually? Well, I would like to request that we advertise for those two seats. Okay. That needs a motion, I'll make it a motion. I'll second that. Motion to main second to approve the advertisement for planning commission members. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same, motion passes. <coughs> thank you all. Yep, thank you, Bill. Mr. Mayor, could I just ask, Bill, uh, is there, uh, are there people that are resigning their position, or typically that would go to the year end? Uh, last year, the council approved two members for a one-year term, and that term will expire. Oh, okay. Yeah. This will be effective ne next year? January 1. Yep, okay. All right, thanks. Next item, Dave Blomo. Good evening, evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, a couple of items for you this evening. Uh, the first one we kind of started last month when I presented the feasibility study for the 2017 street improvements. Uh, at that point, we didn't want to proceed until everybody had a real good chance to look at it. Uh, but now I'm asking you guys to uh, receive the report officially by resolution here and then order the first step in the 429 process, which is the public improvement hearing, to be held at your next council meeting at 6 p.m. I would make that motion. I'll second that motion. Okay, go ahead. 
I had a question for this resolution. We're showing the estimated or the total says it, an estimated total cost of the improvement of three million two hundred forty four thousand ninety two dollars and fifty cents. But in the report coming up in two thousand seventeen street projects, the total cost there is listed at three million three hundred sixty five thousand. So we're talking about a hundred and twenty thousand dollar difference, roughly. So I'm wondering why we have such a discrepancy on what's going to be presented for the street improvements in this figure at three million two forty four. The other hundred twenty thousand other road maintenance work. I don't know where that would come from. It's all right in the Go Improvement Bonds for 2017A that's coming up. It's in the packet near the back here. That's just the street improvements. Yeah, that's, that's the Are you looking at that the first page of that David Drown? It says 3,365. Yeah, over right there. So it says the bond issue would be 3,365,000. Or street improvements, yeah. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if I may, yep, address go ahead. that question. Change it's uh, the three, the three point three million is. Uh, if you look in the schedules later, that I'll address. That is total. That's issuance costs. That's your capitalized interest. That includes some of your borrowing costs, legal costs to, to implement the bond. So that uh, the three point two million is roughly project costs with the addition of those issuance and capitalized interest. Okay. You understand my question being a hundred and twenty thousand dollars difference. I'm just trying to track where the hundred and twenty thousand dollars is going. Yep, understand. Mr. Mayor, I, if I have on the bullet right underneath the city of Rockville resolution, the last bullet, Sock River Road from County Road 138 to Glacier Road, I believe that might be 139. That is 139. County That's, Road 139, not 138. 138 is over by that's nowhere yeah. close <laughs> but it's still in the city of Rockville. yeah it, that is a nice catch because i'd rather catch that now than uh, before it's approved thank you the other mm -hmm. discussion um if we accept this resolution does that still mean we have to do all of these projects no. at this point no. or no. just ex no this would give you the it. option to continue with all these projects okay. as soon as we drop one off we lose the the opportunity to do the 429 process associated with when we would drop off. So until we have a public hearing or anything like that, yeah, you, you still have the opportunity, well, all the way up till after bidding, quite honestly, to, to pare it down if you chose. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to uh, approve this resolution, which uh, says the city is re uh, receiving this feasibility report and calling for a hearing on the improvements. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, Sam. Motion passes. My second item for you uh, people this evening is a pay application for Keekley Underground for the sampling stations at the uh, two lift stations, the Prairie Industrial Park lift station and the main lift station on Broadway Street here. Uh, Keekley Underground has done most of the work here. They have a little bit of electrical left to do, and I'm proposing at this point that we pay them for 80% of the work uh, without paying them for the meter at this point. So the process for this, in case you guys are wondering, associated with the grant funds, we pay the contractor, uh, submit to deed a copy of the check and the approved resolution here, and then we are reimbursed the 50% that deed covers. And, and just a point of uh, pointing out, I see in the spelling of the contract, uh, Keekly, and the appropriate spelling is KU instead of the KY, but the subject matter doesn't change. And that was under the resolution, both in the top and in the, in the highlighted. But yet in the proposal, uh, it states that it's uh, KU, and that's how I've gotten to know to spell that for years and years. That's how I spell it. <laughs> KU? Yes, sir. Yes. A finger got drifted. <clears throat> okay. I'll make so, a motion to approve the payment request. I'll second that motion. Motion <clears throat> made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same. Motion passes. Good, okay. Okay, thank you. All right, next item uh, Jason Murray with David Drown Associates. It's on 17th Street. Bond report. 
Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to uh, present tonight and have a little dialogue around uh, some of these projects that you're planning in 2017. Just to, just to start the dialogue, obviously you've received my letter and some of the schedules that are attached with it, but this is just a preliminary look at uh, the impacts of, of the projects. This assumes this, the, you know, this, this financial review or this, this bonding scenario assumes full borrowing. Uh, does not take into account some cash and some cash injection that may happen. So to really be, be to the point, I guess this is a very preliminary look at the impacts of this. And, and I believe it's to, to help you through some of your 2017 budgeting and, and capital improvements planning here. So uh, hopefully through this, this dialogue tonight, you can get a, get a snapshot of what the potential impacts are to some of these, these projects and some of the potential borrowing of it. Um, the letter just, uh, we were asked to kind of give you an overview of authority, which uh, my letter for the, the three potential projects, the 2017 street project, the, the public works facilities is what we're calling it, and then the plow truck equipment acquisition. It overviews the, the statutory authority that the city has in, in making the, the borrowing and, and uh, bonding for those three items. Um, Obviously, there's, there's some procedural things that need to happen, as uh, the city engineer talked about uh, starting that process with the, the street, 2017 street projects. Um, the public works facilities also would have a process to go through if you choose to, to borrow for it. It's called capital improvements planning. Uh, that requires some public hearing process, much like it does uh, with the assessment process that you have in the, the street. Uh, for the plow truck, it uh, would be under equipment certificate borrowing, and um, that has some com components set forth by state statute that uh, if borrowing exceeds a certain limit of your, of your estimated market value, then it, it has some uh, public disclosure, public hearing process. Uh, for that plow truck, if, if the council chooses to move forward with that borrowing, you're actually under that threshold, and I've, I've highlighted that in my letter just to, so you can see what the statutory mandates are. Um, Jumping just to this to the schedules, again, uh, just to the schedules are there to give you a, a look at the total cost of borrowing. Uh, you have some project estimates. What what my schedules overlook here or or review with you is, I've combined a master schedule that would take take into account all your all three projects, and then there's some secondary or supplementary schedules in there that breaks them out by individual status. Um, you can see that there's different borrowing terms and borrowing lengths for depending on what you're financing and what you're proceeding with. Uh, we've got your street project right now or your potential street project that you're looking at at a 10-year borrowing rate. That's, that is a short term. Um, however, if you go longer, as, as your city engineer may, may know and, and can better explain than I can, uh, going longer has some, you know, roads generally uh, have a useful life between that 10 and 15 years, some, some 20, some schedule for 20, uh, but generally we like to borrow on a shorter term, so if you do have further improvements that are down the road for uh, whether it be repaving or uh, curb gutter, uh, that, that you're not borrowing on a road you still owe money on. So we, we tend to shorten those up a little bit and make those shorter terms for you. Um, and moving forward with those, if, if you decide to move forward with those three projects. Uh, the final schedule in there, Mayor and Council, is just, I think there's been some long range planning conversation around the street improvements. And we were asked to kind of take a look at a uh, kind of a borrowing every, if the council is going to undertake a project every three to four years, what does that look like and how do you mitigate your risk and balance your debt on some of those projects. And so what that final, page or that final schedule does is really tries to balance that debt out so you, you know obviously in the early years you're, you're taking on a lot of debt in the first you know six to nine years but then after you get into year year 12 13 14 15 you got debt coming off and, and new debt coming on and and uh, what does that mean to tax rate and, and essentially to, to do a project every three to four years your, your tax rate would would uh, stabilize right around about that 69 percent which which I believe in 2015 here, you're at right around 44. You've got a projected rate for 17 of about 55. So uh, you can see that there'd be some, some impacts to that, to that rate uh, if you choose to, to do some master planning and some capital improvement planning around street reconstruction. So, um, 
Again, this is very preliminary. The, the, the snapshot are, are our best guess at rates. Uh, I wish I had a crystal ball to tell you what rates are going to do. Just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen rates cheat up a little bit in, in borrowing. And, uh, you know, who knows if it's election or, you know, the Fed has talked about raising some rates at the end of the year. If we're already starting to see some of that momentum moving them up. Uh, but I wish I had a better crystal ball for you. We've, the, we've, uh, we've added, uh, padded the interest rates a little bit to give a little bit of cushion for that. Uh, but until you bid out the projects or decide to move forward and bid out the projects, uh, at that time, we can put final numbers together to give you a better, better look at what the market's doing as far as interest and the cost of borrowing. Uh, I'll pause my comments, Mayor and Council, if you've got any questions for me. Um, I have a question, maybe city engineer or, or Jason yourself. Dave, when you said um, about the four, if we took a project off, we couldn't meet the 429, are you talking about, so could we, re, if we decided we could remove the plow and the buildings, but still borrow for the streets? Yes, and correct. This is, this is just very preliminary. It doesn't obligate you to move forward, council member, at all. But I, 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 I want to know, because you said if we took something off, we couldn't. If we took it off the list this evening before we did a public hearing. Oh, before, it, okay, we gotcha. We couldn't add it back in. I thought you meant if we just took something no, off. No, no, <laughs> no. Gotcha. That was concerning the feasibility report. Yep, yep. The street improvements. It didn't yep. have anything to do with the plow truck and gotcha. other facilities. Dave, on that street now, we keep these streets on here. We, further, we go through all this process. We can take a street, a certain street off and prioritize a different one in its place. Can we do that? We could not add one that's not on the list. Not on the list. Correct. Okay. Okay. That's what I want to know. Good enough. Go ahead, Dwayne. Uh, either David or Jason, uh, in the second or statutory authority, it's the uh, second uh, sentence, with the city's intent to ex assess over 30% of this project to benefiting properties, the city can offer its general obligation. For years, we've had a 27% max or something like that, and usually it falls in less because there are certain ones that we cannot. So could I get some clarification on where that intent, uh, and because you're using 30% in your numbers, I would assume, Jason, correct? Correct. Uh, um, we rounded just to 30% to make it an even. If the council just chooses to change their policy, or my understanding, it was always in the 20 to 27 percent range. Yeah, maximum of 27, and so we've had that. We can, we can change that upon if the council moves forward upon final recommendations. But the statute requires that to, to meet the uh, the improvement bonding that, that uh, for assessments, you you have to assess a minimum of 20 percent of the project. Okay. And that, thank you, that, that was the other question. What triggers it? And I think there's a, a myth out in the public and certainly probably even amongst us council members, what is that magical uh, ratio or something like that? So if we want to do a, is there tied in with the tax capacity or what triggers that that we would need to assess rather than to? Your, your local policy and practice is what governs your assessment. There's, there's no magical statute or the only thing that governs I should say statute clarify, is it requires that if you're going to assess, you have to assess at least 20% of the project to borrow it under this authority. There's other authorities you could certainly use, but uh, being streets, streets are one of the, uh, the more challenging improvements to borrow for. If it's sewer and water included in street repairs, not a problem, but when it's just street and curb and gutter, it creates some challenges to the statute. And if I could just follow up, the city of Rockville is obviously substantially different than a lot of municipalities because we have an enormous amount of land mass, and if that's good or bad, I happen to think it's great to have, because we can have orderly growth uh, with the land mass that many cities do not have that privilege. But along with that, enormous amount of roads then per capacity of, of per taxpayer, and so therein lies that dilemma of how do you pay for that and continue. And we might have not paid enough towards road uh, improvements based on the paying of the buildings. And when I do a constituency service, that's one of the biggest concerns I have with this uh, alleged increased, and it has not yet happened. Some people think it's already happened, and that's not going to happen until December when we finally decide. But thanks for clearing that up. Thank you, Jason. 
Thank you. Next item, administration 2017 budget, just an FYI. Okay. Next item, council action, appropriations, allocation transfers, 401 Oak Street. Uh, is this the one with a garage and all yes. residents? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we have what till year end, or we had a we had something that we did last year and extended it for one year, correct? And then, but I think staff or Marty, our administrator, is asking us to what go ahead with the uh, legal process. It it appears that you push this off to. October 19th oh. um, in terms of uh, deciding whether to take action on yeah. um, bringing the property into conformance. In yeah, terms Adam, of, I'm, you, you reminded me, two months yeah. ago I made the motion to yeah. defer because there was alleged activity going on and I don't know, uh, Carol Dittman reported last month that there was activity, so. We're maybe. actively trying to stop. Yeah. Well, the question I have on this is, according to what I'm hearing is we're, we're going to require this garage to be torn down because there's not a principal structure on there. But yet, just two blocks away, just before you, you turn by the gas station, and before you even get to the Sauk River, on the left-hand side, there's a garage sitting on a parcel with no principal residence. So why is that one okay, but that one's not? Um, do you know the story on the other one? I don't well, know. the other one is the Alice Sh Schneider for years and years and years. It was a double garage that was built when they owned the property to the north that the Thompsons are living in. But those are two separate parcels right now. It's in the core city. It's going north uh, immediately over the railroad tracks going north on the left-hand side. And the situation with this Oak Street, the residence burned? That the was a burn. Burned, that right. was a, uh, probably a two years ago, Father's yeah. Day. I think Adam would like to speak. Mr. Ahead, Mayor, Mayor, Members of Council, I, I'm not sure the facts of this other uh, one possibility is um, Rockville is a relatively new city, relatively new zoning code, and one may be a legal nonconformity, something that existed prior to the zoning ordinance taking effect. Um, yep. That's often yeah. Yeah. how these... That building, I believe, was there before even this, when the city and township, every saw that building was there. It was a separate, like a garage across from... Residence that Dwayne just stated at. Yeah. It was built in the era between 73 yeah, and 77. There. It was there. It was, and then a separate part. I don't remember the full thing, but there was some legal transaction. Other thing was done to make it that they could use it. And the individual, I guess, uses that storage or he works something out of the building. I'm not sure what he does in there. I've seen him there cutting the lottery, and he sometimes is there with his camper sitter, his motor home or sitting, and he's there for a couple of days in the summer already. So it was there. It's been there. 20 years, I would say, that building. How, how long has this property been, um, have they been trying to sell it? That's been there a lot longer than 20 years. The, no, no how, long is the, how, how long have they been actively trying to sell it? I'm, Does anybody know? How long has it been since the house burned what? down? Um, a couple of years. Two years ago, I would imagine. It was like on a Father's Day weekend. Your, your um, meeting minutes, as Judy points out, indicate that uh, the council issued a interim use permit in September of 2012, so okay. presumably within <laughs> several months before. Forward. It was like yeah. Father's Day weekend of limited fire department members that were around that weekend, and I remember it well because it was right next door to the active senior adult community that I'm involved in, and I was seeing smoke. It was scary. But Sue, so your question, Carol had indicated about two months they've been trying to sell it. We take, Will we take a little bit Carol? of comment? Carol might have some valid. Go ahead and make it quick, Carol. Just, you, can, you can speak from back there if you want. Tracy Stevens took over the property just shortly before September, you know, like sometime in August. Um, Dale Humberding, who originally owned it, is well, immaterial, but anyhow, he signed it over to her. And she has been actively working. Uh, now, I didn't talk to her this past week, but I talked to her last week. She had a couple of more inquiries on it. So she is really actively looking for somebody, working with somebody, and she's willing to sell it quite reasonably. Somebody who's willing to take, you know, build a house there. Mr. So she has to be real active. 
I okay. guess. Go ahead. Uh, if, if I recall the one in question over by the bridge, years back, that had gone through the city council, and I'm not sure if the classification of that lot was changed. Something was changed so that the council allowed him to do that, and this could same thing could be tried on it. Any lot in town for that part. I guess I have a, maybe a question to Adam. So what are our options on here? I mean, if it's been, it's not in compliance with our ordinance and it hasn't been for three years. Um, certainly reissuing yeah. another interim use permit for a short period of time to allow for a uh, sale. Um, again, I... I apologize, I'm not super familiar with what's around that property, okay. um, but um, you know, if it were conveyed to an adjacent home and the lot was attached, I believe that would probably bring it into compliance. Building a house on it uh, would bring it into compliance or demoing that structure that's there would bring it into compliance. Carol, is it being marketed uh, that the buyer has to put a residence on it? Is it they're, they're being made known of the requirements of the city if they buy yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. And please take into consideration the new owner from the fellow that you were dealing with before. Yeah. yeah. What kind of shape is the garage in? Pretty, yeah. It's uh, adequate for, yeah. but, but if somebody was in a building a new home on there, the nature of that style of uh, lot, they would probably eradicate that garage and then have a tuck under that would feed from the back, tuck under garages tucked in from the backside like several of the others in the area based on my past years of being in the contracting world. If I had that piece of property, that's what I would do. It may no. not be the most attractive because it's not brand new, but it is solid and it is functional. Mm -hmm. We don't have any complaints from any neighboring properties about condition or how it's no, being used or anything? Not that I'm aware of, uh, city staff certainly could, but I think the fact that uh, in this case, if we as a council show leniency, and that's what I uh, begged of the last time, because it was an act of God that caused it. If it would have been something else that the home would have been eradicated for purposes of, and then the garage was not, it's a different story. But in this case, it just seems like we should be a little bit more user friendly. But yeah. as Sue well, stated, how many years friendly. is it? Yes. <laughs> so, I, know. I think so. it's a little hard to say that, but yeah. having having said that, I would be in favor, and I guess I could make it as a motion to extend an interim use permit for six months. Okay. And hopefully that gives them time to market it. But after that, I yeah. think, you know, okay. maybe we need to yeah. Give think about time. taking some, uh, some other action. Form of a motion, was it too? That was my motion. I'll second that. And a lot of commentary with it. <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. Um, I, I'm not, I, I believe the interim use permit has expired, so it would it require them to come in and apply for another one. Oh. Okay. Uh, if, if it has indeed expired. Yeah. Okay. If it has, it, excuse me, if it, if it has expired though, and it would just be a non, it's a non-conforming lot right now, we just didn't take action on it, what, do we, we can give them six months and decide to uh, go ahead and, and ask to have that garage eradicated at that time? Um, or? Well, I guess it's hard for me to say, how do we not follow our ordinance? So right. It feels I, like we should require them to come in and get the interim use yes. permit then. You know, if you're aware of a violation out there of your zoning code, you'll have the potential to be subject to a mandamus action, a neighbor, most likely, sue, saying, enforce your ordinance. You need to do something. There's, this isn't allowed. And so my conservative advice to you would be have them come in for an interim use permit. Then, then you don't have to worry about right. um, okay. that concern. And, and that would have to come from the owner rather than from us, correct? Well, we can, yeah, we can pre-approve it here, can we? I mean, um, no. you're going to have your notice requirements to neighbors and a public hearing requirement okay. there. All right. All right. Want to amend your motion? Sorry. I, yeah. I didn't realize it had expired. I was thinking we could extend. And it, I'm, but. based on the meeting minutes here, it seems like it's expired, but okay. I can't tell you with certainty. So we don't really need a motion. We just need probably somebody from the city to yeah. contact them and I, I would tell them to come in and file before our next meeting. 
That, that would be my suggestion, give staff direction to reach out to the property Ta owner. Table any action until yep. uh, movement by yeah. the so owner. That will, yeah, I'll make that motion. We'll table any action. So you, table, table action and The time certain of one oh, month? November, two, yeah. One November month. meeting. Okay, yeah. I'll second that. Motion been made and second to table action, direct staff to uh, request the owner come in and apply for interim use permit. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same, motion passes. Mr. Mr. Mayor, the owner that Carol alludes to is living, I believe, in Florida, but her parents are here, and her parents were here at the previous meeting, so could it be a designee such as her parents that would come in and put that request, or does it have to be the specific individual? Sure, folks can have an agent appear on their okay. behalf. It certainly. just seems logical yep. that the local person that is attached... Uh, Typically, we'd ask for something in writing from the owner saying, "Okay, I designate so and so to appear yeah. on my behalf." Our great staff will convey that, right, Judy? Yeah, Judy's got it. Next item, Adam, two five eight one four Lake Road, nuisance spilling. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, working with the administrator in the end of August, I had sent the property owner a notice of noncompliance and given him. Uh, compliance deadline. Uh, Marty and I both had a couple conversations with uh, actually one of the property owners. Um, no action has occurred. Um, I did ask for the property. I talked to the property owner again today. Um, I had intended to print out the email that I asked him to send to me, but I'll forward that on tomorrow. Uh, essentially, um, uh, Mr. Danielson has a partner who um, caused the property to go into foreclosure. I did look it up, but it did actually go into foreclosure. Mr. Danielson brought it out and he's um, working with the bank to get the property solely in his name. Um, and so that is one of his hangups uh, in terms of timing. The other issue seems to be there is an existing uh, structure on the property that's a, a legal nonconformity. Didn't, doesn't meet current setbacks it did at the time of construction um, you know there's all these grandfather rights that come with that once you demo the building it starts a clock where those rights can go away and so uh, mr. Danielson um, is very keen to preserve some of that flexibility that those rights give him and so that's the other reason he's not pulled a permit to demo that yet he wants to wait until he has a actual plan for a, a new structure on the site. Um, I indicated to him that, you know, we've kind of started that enforcement process and I uh, asked him to put that in writing so that the council could understand, um, you know, what he was saying uh, instead of me just relying, relaying verbal discussion to you. Uh, I told him I made no promises on what the council wanted to do tonight. If you wanted to direct staff to proceed with enforcement. What that would look like is getting the building official to make a report, um, kind of like any, I don't, I think Rockville's had some hazardous building abatements in the past, not any recently that I can think of, but the building inspector makes a finding that comes back to the council and that starts a court process. Ultimately, if the property owner doesn't cooperate, city gets the authority to demo the building and assess those costs. Um, city has the ability to recoup all of its costs, including its legal fees. Still a burdensome process for the city to go through. So um, up to you whether you want to give Mr. Danielson a little more time. He asked for uh, 30 days. Um, so really kind of up to the council what option you want to take there. I, I think it's fine to do 30 days yeah. see what happens after that yeah. rather than starting a cumbersome process if we don't need to and I don't think we were all aware that, that this property had been in lost or going to foreclosure either which can and b and &E working on this now I see too that there's no reason why we can't give him a little more time and he comes to us with some kind of a plan now it'd be fine with me the structure we're talking about is the one that uh, I had reported to Marty and <coughs> It has been that way a few years. I think everybody was just kind of turning their eye towards it, but the roof is collapsing indoors, falling off, and right on the lake. So, I 
I would agree that, you know, due to the circumstances, another 30 days wouldn't uh, right. make or break anything and causing extra work on uh, <coughs> the city legal side and that wouldn't make sense at this point to... Would it be possible to for the council to have him put together a plan for replacing that structure that we could approve with a certain amount of time that started after he got title, sold title, so that he would be comfortable taking this building down in the meantime? I, I think that's absolutely his intent. Um, one thing that Marty and I talked about and had a discussion with Mr. Danielson was just at least come in and pull the demo permit that doesn't require you to immediately demo the structure but it gives the council some assurance that he's ready to do something and move forward um and and i think as soon as he gets his deal with the title uh and getting his partner off the title it seemed like that was something he would be receptive to doing sounds like so could we a make that so. a motion to give him 30 days but within so we'd ex allow 30 more days, but also make a requirement that within that 30 days, he comes in and pulls a demo permit? Certainly. And I don't know if we could require it, but we could certainly suggest it. Well, I mean, it would... It well, would, it would be in lieu of starting a process. I mean, it's giving yeah, him right. an option, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Does a demolition uh, permit have a certain time linked to it like a building permit same time that it needs to be reapplied for i believe marty said six, six months. months you've got to start yeah. work at some point within and, the and six that's what months. a building permit obviously is i'm aware of that but i didn't know about demolition but if it was you know then we can certainly turn around and said well you you showed us your intent by getting a demolition permit and you have not yet accomplished it then it's perfectly clear uh what needs to be done next but you know, at this stage of the game, for another month to see activity of having them come in for a demolition permit, and then do we put a time? Well, for I would say give him. I would make a motion to say we give him thirty days, but he also has to pull a permit, or we start the process. The process. Yeah. Or continue. That, that the gives process. him an option. Yeah. It would create movement. Well, and especially if he's got six months to start the demolition. Yep. There's, so, okay. or to... I'll second leave. that motion, see where it goes. A motion has been made in second to uh, give this property owner another 30 days under the conditions he pulls a demolition permit during that time period. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Rick, you had something on the other. Uh, yeah, this property. this property is also on Lake Road. It's just down a little bit from my house. Um, Brian Drown owns it, and Councillor uh, Don Simon and I met with the owner along with Marty back at the property in August, and he had intended. He at that point had told us he was getting a different contractor to finish the siding. And please report the siding is all on. The siding they right. did complete, uh, they did a great job. But what I wanted to report is at that time, remember we pointed out to him, Don, that there were four vehicles parked there. And even from, we weren't allowed onto the property very far, less than the length of this room from the road. <coughs> Kept us way away from the house. And we had pointed out at that point, I could see vehicles up there without any licensing on them at, at all. And he had indicated to us that he had the plates at home. Well, now here it is October from August, and we still have a couple vehicles there that do not have any plates on them. And the other ones are not current registration. So what does the council wish to do with that? He made progress on the house. That's great. But... We do have ordinances that we can't ignore about unlicensed vehicles, too. And our, if I can just add a footnote, our administrator, uh, since he's been here, has sent out um, uh, dialogue to people that do not have um, 
license that are li that are vehicles that are not licensed. So we know that it's been happening, and when that letter gets sent, it sometimes does cause movement. So the least we should do is at least have our city administrator send out a uh, was brought up at our council that there was still not in compliance, and that uh, you know must be taken or action will be taken. I you know, a letter from our administrator. I think that's fine. Okay. I don't think it takes council action. I think Judy can convey that and go from there. I think, Dwayne, going back many years, maybe Vince can adhere to it, that issue down at apartments, probably all the cars, there's how many vehicles that have been sitting there unlicensed and that, and we went, I don't know how we went to the but we got them, that they were, was taking up more space. We just told them if it doesn't get licensed or to take care of, we were told, and we did, I believe, pull some of that at that time, told them we, so you straighten them out. But that was an apartment coming up. Maybe it's a little different situation than with this house here. But that's what we informed them that they would be told. And I believe some of them were. The owner eventually did take care of the issue there. But he was notified too by staff to try and get this taken care of. The yes. other issue on this property also, and we talked about it a little bit when we talked with the owner, behind the property, right behind the house, he has a load, I'm talking more than a dump truck load of um, ice and water shield is what it appears to be for roofing. Just and scattered the out. The in concern a would be the leaching of that okay. material yeah. into the groundwater, which directly goes into Pleasant Lake. And, and I don't know what the purpose of it is there for. There's way more than you could do that entire house with, you know. Can we just request that in the same letter that that be? I think up? it should be appropriate. It would be very appropriate to add that in that letter. When we mentioned it to him at the site, he said uh, that's behind the house and that should be a no concern to the city if you it, go back. It there is and if see it goes into the aquifer. Trespassing. So it's, yeah. Okay. Well. I'm not. Forgive me, but is an ice and water shield, shield stuff you put on your roof that's, on the yeah, outer yeah, edge? Yeah. Well, that's, how could what would run off that? What would run off if it was on the roof. Well, that's underneath your shingles, shingles when it's put it on the yeah. roof. This is just yeah. partial rolls just laying strewed across the entire backyard of the property. Yeah. You might be right. I just didn't think the water running off that would <laughs> become polluted, but maybe you're right. Um, it probably but, does. Well, go ahead and include that in the letter then. <clears throat> Okay, next item, open forum. Anybody wish to Actually, speak? Actually, I think Rick wanted one more Recory Trail. Oh, Recori, dear. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Recory Trail update. I just noticed that they're pulling all the tracks in. <clears throat> I thought Dwayne's sitting on the board there yet. Yeah, I do have, and I'd like to have some guidance uh, from this council. Um, we are moving forward. Uh, the purchase of that Recory Trails Construction Board is a joint powers agreement for the three cities. The intent is to have 9.9 .9 miles sometime, hopefully before I die, that it's completed until um, uh, the St. Joe Township. Uh, the second phase of it is going forward. The transfer of the land is going to be happening at the end of October, or certainly by November. Uh, Adam, please help me. Out. November 17th. November 17th. Okay. Date. Adam is our legal counsel for that Recorey Trails also. So we are transferring that property to us. Uh, there was um, movement to have a portion of the, the purchase will be complete, uh, but the Con improvement on that portion of it will hopefully then happen next year, depending on financing. The one challenge that comes forward right now, and that is uh, a bit of a bump in the road, incidental will be hopefully solved or con uh, worked on next week, Tuesday, the Cold Spring City has a assessment that they're going to do for their streetscaping, and uh, the, the Recorey Trails Construction Board will be there to um, uh, uh, to uh, share our concerns about having that assessment on that 33 foot of property that the Recorey Trails, which is owned jointly by the three cities. So if they're going to do it, the intent is to have uh, that either conveyed back that all of city of Cold Spring or so not the, because we don't have a taxing authority or capability. And so uh, Adam, please help me out if you have something else that you'd care to share, but we will convey that. So uh, hopefully I'm speaking on behalf of the city of Rockville saying that it's not right for us to have to pay, you know, we're, we the taxpayers are 
paying for the land, the improvements on the land, but the streetscape was really something that's more of a ancillary type of uh, equipment so that we, the city of Rockville and the Richmond will be conveying something much to that same effect or some of that. So hopefully that's what I hear from you guys and that's what I would con convey when I testify at the council next week, Tuesday at Cold Spring. Adam, please share if there's anything else that you have as it relates to that issue or any other issues in Rockville as it relates to the Recorey Trails? Um, no, I didn't know that. It started yesterday. That's a great thing. That's yes. been a, a big uh, concern and mm -hmm. potential roadblock to construction is getting all that out. So that's yeah. great that that's going on already. Yeah. And it starts at the uh, County Road 139 or Mill Street and it's going westerly. And uh, it looks like it's probably railroad equipment that's taking the rail. The ties are still laying there. But that was a concern that we had. And Adam is painfully aware of it that that was one of the sticklers that we had in the uh, purchase agreement about the timing of when those rails go out. So there will be tar hopefully going on the ground sometime next spring there's going to be bids are going out yet the uh, late this December, proposal yeah, so, yeah. Great. yeah so there's movement we're going to have these three <laughs> cities connected via trail besides 23. anything else rick then okay good open forum again vince schaefer 541 caroline lane uh, I'd just like to voice my opinion for whatever it's worth on the Minnesota Basic Code. And no offense to you, Adam, this has never been brought up here before, I believe, but many years ago when I was involved in city government, our city attorney at that time advised us not, and I repeat, not to adopt the Minnesota Basic Code, but to use it as a reference because uh, I had some notes here on that. Many things in the Basic Code are not feasible for a small city to adhere to. This issue is something that has been very dear to me in my 30 years in three different roles as an elected official. It's called local control. Thank you. Anybody else? My name is Wayne Laudenbach, 25409 Pleasant Road. Um, I see on your street uh, projections, your resolution for your streets that, again, we have fallen off the list. We won't even make the list to, get fa to fall off later. We were on it once before. Is it the engineer's position and a council's position to hold the residents of Pleasant Road hostage until we put in the water? Are we not going to get on the list to fix our road? I think basically what to, after that meeting that I was here tonight, I sat in the back. I think the opinion was, I believe, I don't know how many residents from there. Most of them there, let's say there was 50 residents there. All those 50, 45 were, didn't wish to have the street or have water put in. Correct. I think so. That's maybe kind of why we leaned that way. We take some more for until future timing that maybe there, your, everybody said their water was fine. So why should we maybe go and make you have water in? until right. the issue comes, let's say in five years down the road, all of a sudden 10 or 15 people will have an issue with water contamination. They would petition the city that they would like to have water put in. Then we can look at it again. Right. But right so now, are we not going to fix the road until or the road, somebody... Be not, when we say fix the road, it wouldn't be like Dave suggests. We do a reconstruct. We grind up the tire. And we'll just could probably keep making some repairs like we did So we're just going to keep patching holes and the road's going to stay as rough as it is until you, until somebody has contaminated water is that what you're telling me it could be with people but right now in my opinion if all the people don't want why should you know ever you're saying people you should listen to the citizens right now the citizens are telling me they don't want us to put water or road it's best to do it right, but at the same token we have other roads that are just as important maybe we can come up with and some people that i suggested can you do patches and keep it going for the time? So being? why did we fall off the list in the first place? 
I couldn't tell you. With all the council discussed it here, but uh, Mr. Lam, I got to remind you that uh, open, purposely open forum is for you to make comments and not okay. have open dialogue. Well, then my, then my next comment is: Why are we spending two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars of our tax money on a new plow to run down a road that's just going to beat the heck out of it? So noted. Rockville Township had an issue of roads that were just as bad, and they had a plow truck driver who the plow broke on him on that road, sent him into the ditch and into the hospital. They then decided to fix the road. I hope the city of Rockville doesn't do the same with our road. Thank you. I noted that in the budget, uh, I'm sorry, Tim Byram, uh, 80th Avenue, St. Cloud, Minnesota, or, well, Rockville, but mailing address, St. Cloud. I noticed that 82nd, 83rd, and 263rd Street, well, two avenues and 263rd Street were on the agenda for new paving for next year. There is one taxpaying resident for the city of Rockville on that, what, mile of road? The cost of doing that mile of road is, has that been broken down? Not sure what it is, but I'm sure somebody has that figure. With one taxpaying resident and the other resident or the other landowner on the Rockville side in arrears in back taxes of, what, $600,000 to the city? The only money that's going to be contributed is going to be from the one taxpayer that has maybe all of 200 feet. And we're going to do those three roads in lieu of, and I don't live on Pleasant Road, but I feel his pain. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, we Recess the meeting or close the meeting? What's the proper terminology? Uh, Mr. Mayor, it would be to close the meeting for attorney-client uh, discussion related to the uh, pending Archon litigation. Okay. 